they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. OK, children, I think it might be good if you two played a part for a little bit. G'day, you cheeky dogs. Today we're going to be breaking down the Bluey episode, Mums and Dads. We are going to be talking about all the Easter eggs, the hidden details in it, some of the Aussie slang and, like, the differences with other countries and those words. Woo! Someone's stinky! What? Time to change your nappy! No! As well as some of the errors, as well as the gender themes in family that this episode, like, really delves quite deeply into. Which, of course, then led to the possible theory that this episode might be an analogy about the idea of separation and divorce with parents. I'm never playing mums and dads with you again! Well, I'm not playing mums and dads with you ever again. <laughs> But of course, if you love Indian Rusty, don't forget to hit that like button down below, as well as that subscribe button and that bell for notifications, so you know whenever I release any other Bluey themed videos. And with that being said, let's just jump into Mums and Dads. This episode of Bluey is called Mums and Dads. Morning, honey. Morning, sweetheart. I made you a cup of tea. Oh, thanks. I love a cup of tea in the morning. I know you do. And starting, of course, with the theories, themes, and lessons of this, and the theory of whether this is about separation and divorce. And of course, this was brought up on Reddit, and it's kind of like the idea of the grass is not always greener on the other side, basically. Rusty would never do something this fun. Oh, Polly. Rusty would never take you to Red Castle. Now, I can see how this theory would have come up because, of course, you see them basically being all happy and together at the very start of the episode, playing their mums and dads game, and it's all super good. Then, of course, they have a fight, and then it kind of shows the analogy of, like, them technically, like, splitting up and going off and finding different partners to play with and to play the game mums and dads with. So, again, I can see how people will draw that parallel between showing where parents aren't getting along anymore and so they decide to take a break and separate for a while. Oh, Indy, Rusty, this is not how mums and dads behave. But then, of course, they find that, like, other partners that they're trying to raise their kids with aren't working out and at the end of the day, the person that they were with initially was the person that they were always meant to be with. And that is kind of, like, a very nice sort of happy ending to that idea as well, so I can see where people would get that theory from. I'm sorry I yelled at you, Rusty. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Should we play mums and dads again? Yes, please. First, real quick, if you are looking for something to watch while we are waiting for Bluey Season 4 to eventually come out, I do recommend checking out Netflix Japan or Netflix UK or literally just Netflix in any other country that you're in because it turns out that Netflix Japan has like a thousand more titles than what it does here in the US. And of course, you can do that with the help of today's sponsor, NordVPN. Now, those of you who have been with me for a very, 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 very long time are well aware that NordVPN is what I have been using all these years so I can watch Bluey when I'm in the US and the new episodes come out in Australia, I use it to watch ABC iView. But I also watch it to watch new anime that's come out in Japan that we don't get here in the US. Or if I really want to see some of the new reality TV shows in the UK, I use it for that as well to watch Netflix in the UK. So if you want to see any new shows, then you can use my link, nordvpn.com forward slash Aussie Girl Maggie, my channel name, of course. I'll have it pinned down below in the comment section as well as in the description box with a tutorial on how to set it all up as well, because it's really, really easy. But when you do sign up, you do get a 30 day money back guarantee and and currently there is a limited time offer where you also get four months free as well. VPNs of course do more than just changing your location as well, it also protects your privacy too, so that is always a big plus for me. But like I said, you can use my Aussie Girl Maggie link, it's right here, it'll be pinned down below as well, with the tutorial on how to set it all up. Now, back to the video. No! Of course, so the main theme of this episode is meant to be about the idea of gender roles in families and kind of talking about how kids replicate what they see at home and also breaking the stereotypes with that. Okay, I'm off to work now, bye! Uh -huh. Now, of course, this started in the previous episode, Early Baby, and this episode is basically a continuation of it. It's the first ever, like, two-part series episode, technically. However, Polly is a different colour, so she was purple in Early Babies, but she's green in this one. So I do feel like maybe this is, like, the next day, or perhaps this is a game that they've played a lot of the time. Rusty, let's play mums and dads. Okay! But it is important to note, though, that this whole idea of, like, gender-based roles in play and with your families, it started with early babies. In early babies, we see all the girls playing hospital and mums and giving birth to babies, and we see the boys, like Snicker and Rusty, playing, like, dragons and knights and fighting. 
Coco, of course, is with them playing that game, but she's still playing like the female role in that game where she's the princess. So we see very sort of like gender specific games that they're playing. However, of course, at the end of Early Babies, they end up integrating and mixing together and they all go off playing different games together mixed as girls and boys. So of course then that brings us into the episode Mums and Dads where again we see Rusty and Indy playing like a family game which typically you wouldn't assume that a boy would play but these days of course we're much more open to the idea of not gendering games anymore because that's ridiculous. Mums don't go to work. Yes they do. No they stay at home and look after kids. No they don't. Of course though, stereotypes do still exist, like the fact that the mum should be the stay at home parent and the dad should work. And then we see this very specific stereotype played out in this situation where Rusty is part of that kind of family dynamic where yeah, his dad is the one who works and his mum is the one who stays at home and looks after the kids. We see this a lot of course in the episode Cricket. We didn't know about Rusty's <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> But then on the other flip side of that, we have Indy, who we've seen before with her mum, who is the one who works in the family. We saw her mum working in markets, so we can kind of assume that maybe she has like a vegan cake shop or something along those lines, perhaps. But Indy says that her dad, of course, is the one who stays at home. Dad stay at home and mow the lawn. No, I don't. But then, of course, throughout the whole episode, it's basically just trying to show you that there are lots of different types of parenting styles and lots of very involved parents or not involved parenting, things like that. And of course, at the very end of the day, the lesson that they are supposed to be learning is about communication and to not be stubborn when you're arguing, but rather instead come to a compromise where everyone can be happy. Indy, I think mums can go to work. Yeah, so can dads, if they want. And in this case, of course, the compromise is the fact that it's the weekend and so no one has to work. What do we gotta do? What, what if, if it's, it's the, the weekend? weekend? Yeah! It doesn't technically really solve the problem and I think a lot of people on Reddit kind of had an issue with that and that's why a lot of people don't really like this episode as much as like other episodes. But I do think the lesson does come across that, you know, there's always a way for children to find a resolution to the conflict they're having and to be creative and come up with a different idea where everyone can be happy. <laughs> We'll see. But cheeky dogs, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think about the fact that this could be a theory or analogy for the idea of separation or divorce, but then coming back together, the idea of like challenging those stereotypes as well. I wanna know all your thoughts and feelings in the comment section down below. Baby loves his walkies. Now, as for some of the traditional Easter eggs that we have in this episode, we do of course have long dogs and tennis balls in this one. The long dog we see in the sandpit at the very end, as well as a tennis ball next to it too. And we also see a second tennis ball as well with Winton just in front of the tree before Indy goes to play with him. One of the other really cool movie kind of details and Easter eggs in this is the Wilhelm scream. And if you don't know what the Wilhelm scream is, basically it's like this one sound clip that's been used since 1951 in a massive range of movies. And it's basically like the ah scream whenever someone is like falling or being attacked or anything like that. <laughs> Now we do hear this apparently twice in Bluey and Bluey Wiki was the one that picked up on this as well. And when you listen to like the battle in the background between the Terriers and the other kids, you can hear it twice, but you have to listen real hard. So kudos to Bluey Wiki for picking up on this very cool movie Easter egg. Another little detail as well though, is if you look at that fighting scene, it's really funny to see how the different kids react. Like Chloe freaks out and like backs up away from the Terriers, but Honey charges right in there. She is like full gung-ho into it. Now as for some of the Aussie words in this one, they're all related to like baby words, which I think is really cool. So they mostly come from Bluey when she's talking about changing the nappy. Woo, someone's stinky. What? Time to change your nappy. No! which of course means diaper if you are in other countries. We then of course also have the word cot, which just means crib. And then of course dummy, which is what Rusty is like sucking on, which in other countries is called a pacifier. Now what do I do? You take her home and put her in the cot. Oh, cheeky baby. And in general, I just honestly love every single moment of Bluey being unhinged in this episode. It's probably what made me laugh the most because it is the comedic relief for this episode as well. And it is hilarious, just all the different things that she's saying to Rusty the entire time. You're my baby. Baby want milky treats? Yeah! Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Mommy's got to sing you a lullaby. Aw, does baby not like his nubby nubby? No! Now, 
Now, some other little details that you might have missed was the fact that Rusty was the first person to actually introduce the title of this episode. And this is the first episode that is purely specifically focused on Bluey's friends as the main characters of it and not Bluey herself with her friends technically. So I did think that that was a really cool little like hidden detail. We do also have some classical music in this episode. It is from Bach and it is called The Sheep May Safely Graze. And that is the song that is constantly just going on in the background and that Bluey sings to as well. My last favorite little detail as well, of course, is just all the dog jokes in this and the fact that like they're very specific dog jokes too. Like Mackenzie digging up all the holes is something that Border Collie do a lot where they dig holes constantly. Then also the fact that Winton says that he is an obedient breed but bulldogs are known for not being obedient at all and actually like really struggling with commands. Pinky promise to do everything I say. Yes, I'm a very obedient breed. And then of course the really cute one of Snick is like chasing his tail around in a circle. We do also kind of have like, I guess technically some mini errors in this when the fact that there are kids who are at Bluey's school who are not meant to be at her school. So we see Zara, Missy and Juniper all throughout the episode as well, even though they go to Bingo's school, not Bluey's, and we know that they are like a solid distance away from each other. They don't share a yard or anything like that. And then we also see Gruba, who's the German Shepherd during like the battle scene but we never see him ever again at Bluey's school. So most of the fan theories basically work that the idea is that maybe it was like an open day at Bluey's school and so other kids were there to see what the school was like. And I mean that makes sense and obviously from an animation standpoint they just wanted extras in the background so they used those characters that they had. There was no I guess like thought process in it but it technically is an error. I like the bonnet. Ugh. Overall for me, oh, I would probably give this episode maybe four out of five long dogs. It does of course have Easter eggs. It does have of course a very beautiful like lesson for kids to learn about conflict resolution and how to like work that out through play and things like that. And I do think the theory is kind of cool about that maybe it is an analogy for separation. I think that's very interesting. Mm, so I would give it four out of five long dogs, but cheeky dogs, let me know in that comment section down below. How many long dogs would you rate this episode out of five? And what do you think about some of the theories and the Easter eggs from this episode as well. While you're down there though, don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any other Bluey videos. But until then, I have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch, and I'll see you all in another video. Mwah! Bye!